Hello and welcome to a new video about control engineering. This time we're talking again about stability. This time we're going to talk about the so-called Nyquist criteria. Okay. And I promised it will be a much catchier stability criteria than we have used before. Yeah, a little bit more, a little bit less mystic, of course, not more, <laughs> less, less mystic. So. We take again a look at our control loop. We take again a look at our control loop. We have calculated the reference variable transfer function and I will write it down once again. Uh, FW from S is FR from S multiplied by FS from S divided by and now 1 plus FR from S, FS from S. And we also thought that said there is something like the open loop transfer function. So if we break it up here, the feedback, yeah, then this open loop transfer function, FO, how this is transferred to here, here is it coming in nothing. Yeah? So with FO equals FR from S multiplied by FS from S. Yeah? This we have already we have it already used in here. Yeah? So my reference transfer function FW from S is actually FO from S divided by 1 plus FO. Okay. This is to some sum up. So, what have we got here? Huh? We said it is interesting that this, this thing is going to the extremes, going to infinity. This is exactly the same approach like we've used before. Huh? So if this is going to infinity, this might be interesting for us. So when is going to be that thing really, really big? Yeah? It is if that thing 1 plus FO is getting zero. So in case 1 plus FO is getting zero. This is an interesting point yeah? because then FW is reaching very high values. In theory, unlimited. So wherever FO from S is reaching minus one, we may be in trouble. Okay, so this is the point eh, where it's getting interesting. This is the mathematical approach. Eh? Now, let's let's make the let's make it simple. Eh? Let's make an example. Eh? Let's say. Our FR has the transfer function k divided by 1 plus s, yeah? and our system FS has the transfer function 1 divided by 1 plus s squared. Yeah? So these are the two things. Yeah? What we want to do, yeah? we are calculating now. FO, huh? so FO equals FR multiplied by FS. Huh? So this is actually K divided by 1 plus S multiplied by 1 divided by 1 plus S squared. Yeah? So this is K divided by 1 plus S the third. Huh? Which is further, if you calculate this, yeah, k divided by 1 plus 3s plus 3s squared plus s the third. Huh? Just, just get lo loose of the bracket. Okay? So that's it. Huh? And now we're interested in the Bode plot huh? or in the Nyquist plot. Now we want to see the frequency response. So actually 
s will get j omega. So s squared is j squared omega squared. j squared is minus 1, so it's minus omega squared. Okay? And s raised by the power of 3 is uh, j omega multiplied by s by raised by the power minus omega squared. Uh, multiplied, so it's minus j omega the third. Okay, so this means my open loop transfer function for the frequency response would look like 1 plus and now 3s, so j, I write the j in front, yeah, uh, 3 omega. Then minus, because it's minus omega, the third minus 3 omega squared, squared, yeah. And here we have this, minus j omega the third. Yeah. So actually if I separate this now in real and imaginary part down here, we have k divided by 1 minus 3 omega squared. This is the real part plus j and now the imaginary part. This is 3 omega minus omega the third. Good. And now I could calculate for different case, different open loop transfer functions. However, I want to know now at which k I exactly reach this point. Yeah? At which k and at which omega I exactly reach this point. So I want to know where fo from j and now I call it omega 1 because it's now it's a certain frequency I want to know. Yeah? Equals minus 1. Yeah? This I want to know. Yeah? So this means minus 1 equals and this here k divided by 1 minus 3 omega 1 squared plus j 3 omega 1 minus omega 3. Okay. This I want to know. So I simply bring this to omega 1, of course, yeah? because it's a certain omega. I bring this to the other side, yeah? so it's actually 1 plus k divided by 1 minus 3 omega 1 squared plus j 3 omega 1 minus omega 1 the third is 0. Now I multiply with the lower part, so what is left here is k and now plus 1 plus 1 minus 3 omega 1 squared plus j 3 omega 1 minus omega 1 the third equals 0. And now I can separate this. I have one equation and two variables. Luckily it's a uh, complex number. So I can separate this into two parts. There's the real part. And there's the imaginary part. And for a complex number to be zero, yeah, both parts need to be zero. So I can write k plus 1 minus 3 omega 1 squared equals 0. That's the real part. Again, one equation and two, two variables. Yeah. Let's have a look at the imaginary part. He has written 3 omega 1 
minus omega 1 the third equals 0. Uh -huh. Here I only have left one variable. So I can calculate. So I can omega 1 multiplied by 3 minus omega 1 squared yeah, is 0. So one way to reach this is omega 1 equals 0. So called trivial solution. Okay, so at omega 1, 0, it is obvious. And the other way is if 3 minus omega 1 squared is 0, yeah, so this means plus omega 1, omega 1 squared is 3, so omega 1 is the square root of 3, which is actually 1.732 seconds raised by the power of minus 1. So at the, at the value of square root of 3, I will reach the imaginary part 0. Now let's have a look at the real part. Here I put in 3, so there is k plus 1 minus 3 multiplied by the square root of 3 squared. Yeah? So this square root of 3 and this is 3. Yeah? This is 3, so it's 3 multiplied by 3, this is 0. So this is actually k plus 1 minus 9 yeah, is 0. So it turns out plus 9 minus 1, k equals 8. At k 8, yeah, at a gain factor of k equals 8, and at the frequency of 1.732, square root of 3 seconds raised by the power of minus 1, we reach exactly this point, this minus point. Okay? We will have a look at this in our Bode plot. Ah, not in the Bode plot, in the Nyquist plot. We will have a look at this in the Nyquist plot. I already calculated here from, from uh, this, this function. I put in here k equals 8 yeah? and I calculated for different omegas, different values, and I already put them here in the Nyquist plot. You see the dots, here is 0, here is 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, blah, 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 blah. And it looks like that. Yeah? I will try now to draw this, to give you an impression, to connect the points to each other. Yeah? This is how this system looks in the Bode plot, okay? What we can see, it touches three quadrants. This is, must be, because this is, is a third order system. And we are exactly running here through this nucleus point, minus one. This is how this looks like. Yeah? So we are exactly running through minus 1. A nice uh, snail house. Yeah? This would happen, this would happen in case of k equals 8. Okay? This is the so-called border stability case. Yeah? If I'm reducing k, yeah, make k a little bit smaller, then it looks like that, that we are, let's say, we are not at 8, we are at 6. And we start here. Okay? So, eight divided by six, one dot three. Yeah? or 6 divided by 8, 75%. Where would we end up here? Here we are at 5 dot, I call it 5 dot 25, yeah? 5 dot 25 multiplied by 0, 0 dot 75 equals 3 dot 9, so we would be here. Yeah? Somewhere here. Yeah? And here we would 
we are no, no, not at 1, we are at, at 0 0.75. Yeah, everything will be just scaled down because it's a proportional factor. So my, my snail house now looks like that. Here. So we are everywhere scaled the blue line. Here, somewhere here, we are at the bottom. We just scaled the blue line. Huh? So this is actually how it would look like with K6. And now, if we try to draw it with K equals 10, huh? we would start here. Yeah. So we have a multiplication of 10 divided by 8. Yeah? This is 1.25, so it's now multiplied by 5.25. Where do we get 6.6? .6. So we are here somewhere, yeah. And here 1.25 is here. We would look like this. Yeah? Oh, so scaled, just scaled this thing. These are now our three different curves for different k simply okay so this is k equals 10 yeah this here is k equals 8 this is our border case which we have exactly calculated and this here is k equals 6 yeah? and now i can tell you here, we are taking now a closer look to this, this part here. Yeah? So in border case, we are exactly passing through the so-called Nyquist point here at minus 1. Yeah? This here is an instable system. The red one is instable yeah? because it's surrounding the Nyquist point. Yeah? The Nyquist point is not left outside okay this green line here is a stable system yeah here we are away from the nucleus point so we stay inside this nucleus point okay this is the big difference yeah? and we can even we can even make it uh, make there some uh, characteristic values where we can explain how far we are away. Okay. So I've also prepared a little zoom here. Yeah. So actually, 1.25 here. Yeah. I will draw it here, make a copy, let's see. <laughs> Something like this. And here I make the stable version. Yeah. Something like this. What we can see here, huh? this is the the border plot, uh, the, the, the nucleus plot. What we can see here is that here huh, we do have still a certain reserve angle. Yeah? It's alpha r yeah? reserve angle. Yeah? Phase reserve, it's called, yeah? where we reach the one point, we are having a certain angle referred to, to the nucleus point. Yeah? So we are stay away from the nucleus point. Yeah? And there is also another thing. Yeah? So this is this here. Yeah? This amount, this is actually the amount where we stay away from the nucleus point if we have minus 180 degree phase. Yeah? So this is the phase at, at gain factor 1. Yeah? This gives the phase reserve and the amplitude reserve is given uh, how far we are away. Actually, this is 1 divided by the amplitude reserve. Yeah? Because this with this factor I can multiply my green line in this case and then I have border stability. Yeah? This, this is this. So 
these are the values uh, we are looking at. Yeah? Now we looked at it at the Nyquist plot. Yeah? However, we can also have a look at it at the Bode plot. This is why I draw this here. Yeah? And always remember, it's the open loop transfer function. Yeah? So let's draw this border stability case. So at the frequency of what have we calculated? Where is this? 1.732. At a frequency of 1.7, so somewhere here, we reach 1. Yeah? This is the one line. Yeah? We reach 1. At the beginning, we have a gain of 8. Yeah. Here we would have the frequency 1.7 square root of 3. <laughs> here we have the frequency of square root of 3. And here we are at 8. So we are at 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. This is this line. Yeah. And it would look like this. And around 1 we have this we have this band. Yeah. So here we are going down, and here we are then really, really going steep down. Pretty steep. We are ending up at somewhere here. This is how this looks like. So here we have k equals 8. Okay. And actually, if we compare it to this, yeah? now let's draw k equals 10. k equals 10 is just shifting this. Yeah? So it's just shifting this up and k10 is here. Yeah? So we are slightly above here and here we are parallel going down. So this curve is just shifted up. This is the red line. Okay. This is the red line. It's this one. And now let's draw the green line. We start at 6. Yeah. So this is here. And it's just parallel shifted down. Everything is parallel. It's just shifted down. This is the green line. By the way, in the face there is nothing much changing. Yeah? Because we are starting at zero. Yeah? Here. Yeah? Exactly. Here, where we hit the one line, we are reaching minus 180. So here, we are reaching minus 180. Here, yeah. And we are ending up at, we are crawling in from the above, we are ending up at 270, minus 270. So actually it will go down pretty steep. Here, at 1, we are at the half of 1, 270, so it's here. We will go down pretty steep. We make a uh, mile. <laughs> we make a pretty quick change from zero and then going down to minus 270. This is somehow uh, should be symmetrical, of course. Ah, nah, yeah. Nah, yeah. <laughs> this is the phase. This is the phase line. Yeah. This will not change. The only thing I'm moving is this up and down. So here we have k equals uh, six. This was, yeah. And here we have k equals ten. And here also. Here I can see exactly. Here I am now. I am now to have the new one line. And if I go down, here, tuck, and to minus one hundred eighty. 
here I have my phase reserve alpha r. Okay, this I can read out of the body plot as well. This is just where I hit the one line going down and look how far I am I away, exactly like here, how far am I away from, from the minus 180 line. Yeah, because minus 180 would be here. It's exactly the same. And here I also see where I reach minus 180. This is here. And here I have my... Here I read exactly my phase reserve, uh, my, my amplitude reserve. Yeah? How much gain I can add to reach border stability. Okay. I can tell you, the bigger, the bigger the uh, phase reserve or the amplitude reserve is, the more stable is the system. The farther I am away from this nucleus point, the more stable it is simply. If I'm at the nucleus point, I have border stability. If I'm beyond the nucleus point, it's instable. Yeah? So in my, in my real world application, I need to stay away from this nucleus point. How far do we have to stay away? Well, uh, it depends. Yeah? Depends. If you have a look, on, on the control loop again. Yeah, if you have a look at this control loop, if it is very important for you that the reference variable is transferred to the, to the co control variable very accurate, yeah? so if you expect a lot of changes in the reference variable, then this means Actually, our, our FW is important. Yeah? So this means if, if FW from S is very important, then we should reach an amplitude reserve of around factor 1 to 10, yeah? so that we are here at a fourth or a tenth part only. Yeah? And a phase reserve, alpha r, of, of 40 degree to 60 degree. Yeah. This would be so somewhere here. Yeah. This is if FW is important. If you expect the, the reference variable to stay pretty much the same, like for instance for room heating, yeah, and it is important to react on, on disturbances. Yeah. So if this FZ is getting important, the disturbance transfer function, yeah, then we can get a little bit closer to the stability part, yeah? because then it may be a swing a little bit, but nothing much will happen. Yeah? So then we have an amplitude reserve of around 2 to 3, yeah? so we're only at half here, yeah, somewhere, yeah? and an alpha air, and, and, and phase reserve of 20 to 50 degree. This is usual values, let's say, yeah? depending on your application, of course. Yeah, now I've told you the Nyquist criteria. Yeah? Important is that we are looking at the open loop transfer function. Okay, we are looking at the open loop transfer function. Let's have a look on the Nyquist plot again. Draw the open loop transfer function, read out some reserve values and say it's stable or it's not stable. Huh? And I promised it will be not that mystical. Huh? How could I do this? Huh? It's And why is it that exactly when we go beyond this point, because we just calculated it this point, who says that if we are beyond this point, this is instable? Why should it be instable? Just because I told you so, right? <laughs> right now, this doesn't really fit together. However, I will now show you again the model of our, of our control loop. 
imagine. Huh? What does it mean if we have a phase reserve of minus 180 degree? Huh? This means whatever is coming out here huh, is exactly negative. Okay? If it's exactly negative and I subtract it, yeah, it's again positive. Okay? So if I will do something here. Huh? I will change something here. This change will, will go through and will exactly at a point in time it will appear here and will be fed back. And because this point in time, this phase shift is nothing more than time delay, yeah? is that unlucky that if we go and coming back here, we will amplitude again yeah because we have a phase shift of minus 180 and we will so in every loop this will feed itself okay i have a feedback yeah you can hear it such things you can hear for instance in your audio system if you go with the microphone too close to the to the speakers yeah then mm, this is exactly this is exactly this yeah and now yeah now we have established whatever is coming out here will be feedback and there is looping through because it, the timing is so unlucky at minus 180 degree yeah, that it will simply hold itself. Okay? And now if you look if you're looking here, yeah, if we're at the blue line, exactly the same amount will be shoveled in circles here it will not disappear because we have a gain factor of 1. Yeah? So if we have a gain factor of 1, yeah, it will simply stay. If the gain factor is smaller than 1, yeah, so if in every loop there is getting less echo back, yeah, then this will disappear over time. Yeah? So there's a loop, there's a loop, loop will be smoothing down, closing down, getting silenter. Yeah? Let's call it that, getting silenter every loop. Because simply what is coming back is not that strong anymore than what originally was there. Yeah? However, if the gain factor is positive here, yeah? so the red line, so if, more, if there is even more coming back than I've originally introduced, yeah. Then, with every loop, this is getting more intense and more and more and more intense. Okay, this is instability. Yeah. And now it's clear. Yeah. Now it's logical. If we here have a gain above one, yeah, we will simply add in every loop new things, and this will grow to infinity. If we are below one, yeah. With every loop, this will reduce and will silence out. Yeah. So now you see, and now it's also logical, if we are far away here, it simply means it will fade down faster. Yeah. If we have 99%, yeah, then 99% is left, and then 99 of 99% is left, and this will fade down very slowly. If we only have a 10%, and yeah, then only 10%, and then we have only 1%, then we have 0.1%, this will fade down pretty fast. Yeah. Now you see, it's really more obvious, this Nyquist criteria. Yeah. What is an interesting point, actually, is that we have a look at the open, open loop transfer function uh, to maintain or to, to discuss stability of the closed loop. However, this is how it works and it's pretty logical, right? So, Nyquist criteria. Now you know how this is working, now you know what is a phase reserve? Now you know what is an amplitude reserve. Yeah? So phase reserve is how many degree I'm away from minus 180 degree at a gain factor of 1. Yeah? And the amplitude reserve is if I, have an if I have a phase of minus 180 degree, how much can I still gain it to reach 1? 
Good. Next time we're going to talk about an issue pretty much the same. Yeah? However, we are introducing a time delay element somehow. Yeah? So there is, we, we have a loop. I already told a, a dead time element, a simple time delay is a very, very annoying thing. Yeah? We'll have a look why. Yeah? We'll also use the Nyquist plot and you will see why this is really impacting our stability and control. For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.